I'm Brandon at Tailwater Fly Shop, and today we're tying an Easy Quan. All right, so the hook we're using today is an Umqua all-purpose hook in a size two. Probably noticing a trend here at this point if you watch a few of our videos, but this is a good hook. I like this hook. You should use this hook. Do you like the hook? It's a nice hook, man. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to put some eyes on this fly, so we're going to start a thread uh, up at the top. Take my trademark 10 or 11 wraps back. Uh, and the weight that we're going to use, um, I'm still going to throw this fly. I almost dropped him. Caught him, though. And then dropped him again. One sec. Curses. So the weight that we're going to use on this fly is uh, the double pupil lead eyes in an extra small. So uh, I want this fly to be able to crawl along the bottom, uh, but I also still don't want it to hit the water too hard. So this is kind of a happy medium between, you know, a bigger, smaller, medium lead eye uh, and also a bead chain that may not stay on the bottom when I'm kind of dragging this across the fish. Uh, so we're going to use that extra small eye here, get those attached and good and trapped. Make sure these are flush here, and then we're going to take our thread back to the point of the hook. <clears throat> so our next material uh, is extra select crafter, extra select crafter in the sand color, uh, and I'm just going to brush out a good little clump here. Usually take like five or six cuts with a hair scissor and that gives you a pretty good amount. <clears throat> this is a, a faster sinking, you know, harder hitting fly that I'm going to have in my box that I use uh, fishing for speckled trout or if we're, you know, fishing redfish in a pothole like that's three or four feet deep maybe. Um, so I, you know, I can use a little bit more material on this fly because one, you know, it's going to have a faster sink rate, and two, we're going to give these fish, you know, plenty of lead, or we're we're just going to kind of put it in on top of a pothole or in front of a pothole they might be working through or something like that. Um, we've been having that happen a lot lately, so uh, this is a fly I'm going to sneak in, you know, before the fish can get there. So um, we're going to go, you know, one and a half, maybe two times the hook length, and try to shoot for like a three or four inch shrimp or small crab fly here, and trap this crab fur. <clears throat> Once we trim out our excess, um, one thing I do like to do on the quan, I don't put a lot of legs and flash on this fly. Uh, I think about this as uh, some guys call them guide flies or you know just a workhorse, easy to tie kind of fly here. So, um, but one thing I will do is just take a marker. This is a brown marker I just happened to find in the fly bin. Most of the time I use a sharpie. I just couldn't find it today, and we're gonna paint this. Just give it some shrimpy looking stripes here. Three or four is good. I like three. It's a prime number. I don't know. Uh, if you use four, I, not that I won't respect you or anything, but you should use three because it's cooler. <clears throat> so just to give ourselves a little bit of a collar. Oh man. I forgot my hackle. One sec. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! All right, so just to give ourselves a little bit of a collar on the transition from the crafter to the crab body that we're gonna put on, uh, I'm gonna use a grizzly marabou feather in tan. And all we're gonna do, uh, as you can see on this feather, there's a point where it kind of stops rocking back and forth and when you wiggle the feather that's like somewhere in here uh, so that's where I'm going to cut the stem of the feather off and we're going to tie in that kind of last part of the point that doesn't want to roll around the hook shank so we'll tie that in and we're going to wrap this pretty tight uh, right on the base of the craft fur so you don't need to go real far with your thread just a couple of wraps
Somebody stole my hackle pliers, man. Yeah, I'm gonna have to find those later. They're fighting words. But that's okay. We're just gonna palmer this in. Do just two or three good wraps here. Uh, and I'm actually not even gonna trim this feather because we're gonna give it a little bit of a haircut anyway. I'm just gonna pull it straight back, wrap over the top. Uh, and you can see a lot of this stuff is gonna end up getting trimmed out anyway because we want the bottom of the fly to be flat. So I'm just gonna cut that flush right there and let the, let the rest of it sit nice and pretty. And the nice thing about this grizzly marabou feather is it's pretty soft stem so you can kind of wiggle the materials around the hook in the way that you want it. So I can use these extra feathery fibers here to to go around the side of the hook shank. Uh, the next thing that we're gonna use, we're gonna use a combination of EP fibers. Uh, I like sand and brown. Um, some people add a little blue in, some people do some olive. You can use kind of whatever color you want. They make this in a million different colors. Um, but to give my, you know, my crab body kind of a little bit of texture, a little bit of different colorization, because you, you know a lot of crabs are different weird colors and stuff. Um, I'm just gonna use two different colors. I guess that would be a modeled look is what you would call that. Uh, we're gonna take one strand of EP fiber. You can see there's probably, oh, I don't know, 50 to 70 fibers in here. It's a pretty thin strand of these fibers. Uh, and I'm gonna cut it into fourths. So we're gonna cut it in half, and then those halves we're gonna cut in half again. And I've already done this with the sand color. I just wanted to show you kind of how I operate with these quan patterns just to get everything going at the same time. We'll clean up the butt end on that one because it got a little funky. Uh, and then we are going to put these on the bottom of the hook. Uh, it doesn't really, I don't know that it matters. Depends on who you ask. Some guys will tell you it matters. Some guys will tell you it won't. Um, but I like the pink to show through, you know, as a thread, uh, on, as like a hot spot. Uh, and you'll see when we X wrap these on the bottom, you're going to get like a little hot spot look here. So uh, what I'll do is you kind of pull all these fibers back and we're going to X wrap these into the hook. So uh, I'm just going to take one wrap over and another wrap over to trap it. And then I'm going to pull these fibers back and pull the, the other fibers forward. Then we're going to take a wrap around the behind part of those and around the front. So you're making an X on the wraps. And then what I'll do is I'll pull those back, try to get all those fibers back, take just a hand or a couple of wraps in front, um, and I'm going to pull these tight exactly where I want them to sit. Uh, and that's one. And we're going to do this with the brown and the tan until we get to the eye. So sometimes you can do, you know, if you do a little bit thicker of an EP fiber, um, you can do this, you know, with four. If you do it with a little bit more sparse like what we're doing we'll probably get five or six out of this uh, and that's completely okay there's no rules to any of that uh, but let me show you a little trick here while we're at it we're gonna take some hackle pliers I'm gonna pull all these fibers back to get them out of the way uh, and I'm gonna trap them with the hackle fiber but what I'm gonna end up or the hackle plier what I'm gonna end up doing is putting the hackle plier off in an angle so it's not in my way when I tie <clears throat> and then I'm gonna take a clump of the sand that I already pre-cut and we're going to lay those right in front of the brown fibers. So just take a couple of wraps here. And then before I really tighten it down, I'm going to push those wraps back up against it so they really butt up next to each other. Take a couple of wraps over the top, and we're going to keep moving. So then I'll take my hackle pliers off, pull the tan fire, the sand fibers back, uh, and then do it again. And like I so said, we're going to do this all the way to the eye of the hook. And one thing you can do is to really manipulate this and make sure that these stack up next to each other and, and are clean is before you really trap them down with your wraps over the top, you just make sure you pull everything back uh, and then take your couple of wraps in front. And that's really going to lock those fibers into whatever place you want them. Sometimes it helps to take a few wraps over your thread just to make sure that the amount of thread you have kind of wrapped on the hook is even coming through and that's going to keep those fibers 
stuck in the right place with each other. Probably gonna be able to fit two more in there. Maybe three, we'll see. Missed the hook with my hackle pliers, that's cool. I think we're going to slide one more clump of brown in there just for funsies. All right, so you can see kind of here we've got a whole bunch of material. Uh, and basically what I'm going to try to do to trim this the way I want it to is I'm going to split all of the EP fibers away from the hackle that we palmered in. So you can see my hackle is kind of right here and I want to pull as many of those EP fibers back with me as I can. Uh, and I'm going to hold them all straight out and the, the trick a lot of people struggle with getting a nice taper on these. Um, the trick to doing this is I'm going to hold them all kind of straight up uh, and then I like to take my scissors kind of at like a 45 degree angle if you want a wider crab body or if you want a tighter one you can put it flush up against the eyes. I want this one to be a little wider so I'm going to go about a 45 degree angle maybe a little less and I'm going to take one cut and cut all of those materials at once. Uh, and then we're going to do it on the other side and then you can still manipulate a little bit of these fibers together. So I'm going to do the same thing I'm just going to pull my hackle straight up and try and split the difference between I'm sorry, pull my fibers straight up and split the difference between that hackle uh, and the fibers. Try to replicate that same angle pretty close. Uh, you can feel good about this because nothing in nature is symmetrical. Uh, and then what I do is basically once I get done trimming, I'm going to take these fibers and just flatten them out with my fingers and just kind of wiggle those threads tight to each other. Uh, and you can take a couple more you know, trap wraps if you need to. Uh, and what you'll see is now we've got a few like kind of scraggly fibers like these ones up here. Hopefully you can see that in the camera. Um, I'm just going to cut those kind of straight flush and then do the same thing here. And then if you want a rounded look, all I do is just rotate the, the vise with my scissors and just make a few cuts here. And just get any kind of scraggly wayward fibers out of the way. Flatten it out one more time. And then we are ready for, this is a redfish fly, so guess what you get to see here. We are ready for our hard monofilament weed guard. So, brought some pliers this time. Thanks to our water outfitters for band stall pliers for Christmas. Um, so I'll mash that forward with my pliers and not my teeth. And I'm gonna put it right on top of the hook and get it good and propped up here. Get it getting trapped and then we'll take some wraps over the back. And then trim it just above the hook like usual. Uh, and then just to make sure that's getting propped up I'm going to take a couple more wraps. And whip finish. Uh, and we're going to do something here that you don't see me do with a lot of my flies, but I do do it with my quans, uh, is we're going to protect these thread wraps just because there's not a lot of material covering them up. Um, so we are going to finish this fly off with some U, uh, Yoon? some Loon UV fly finish. Uh, and I like the flow because I feel like the flow kind of gets into the thread a little bit. 
uh, before you cure it. So I really want this stuff to kind of soak in some. So uh, we're just going to give it a pretty generous coating on, t on the top here. And I'm going to make sure I get those X wraps that I made on the bottom because that's really going to stiffen those up. Uh, we didn't take a lot of them, so I just want to make sure those get covered. Uh, and then we're going to take our curing light or the sun. I don't even know how this thing turns on. There we go. There's a button. The button right there. Uh, we're going to take our curing light and just hit all this really good and then I'll actually take all of these flies and put them on a fly dryer uh, or a piece of foam or whatever you have and stick them and just let them sit in the sun uh, just to make sure they get good and cured you don't have to do that but it's something I just want to make sure try to keep glue away from all the rest of my stuff as much as possible and you can take care of any final trimming because some of those fibers will come out with the glue and you are ready to go throw the quan.